Hey guys, how you going? It's your boy Romaine without the eye like the lettuce. And I'm here to talk about something that um, just happened like for sure, for sure recently. But it's something that's been, I battle with um, since I was like 14, 15, which is my sexuality. Uh, more specifically coming out. But before I do, can you please like subscribe to my channel? Cause these, I'm gonna try to get back to doing these weekly. Um, but content will be out at a continuous basis from now on, depending on my equipment working right, because Lord knows. Um, but yeah, let's talk about it. Coming out, to me, happened in like waves. Like there was a wave where I came out to the people around me, like my people and friends at school and my family. Um, and there was a wave where I came out, like I kind of like came out to the people in my circles or like if somebody asked me they knew and there was me coming out to just everybody um honestly uh i'll tell a bit of my story um i was teased and bullied growing up for being different growing up in the hood in the ghetto hood whatever you want to call it it, it was tough because you only saw these hyper masculine dudes around you and you wanted to be that I, I, you wanted to fit in so bad, and when you didn't, it, it, it hurt. It hurt for me. And that hurt growing the resentment for myself for the way I was. And I, I shoved it down for a long time. I hated, I hated who I was, because I wasn't this masculine guy that all the girls liked in school or that didn't, wasn't like too popular, although I was well known. Um, it was tough because I wanted to fit in so bad. But when I was 18 years old, I um, finally decided to tell the people around me that I uh, like guys. I didn't know what to call it. I never called myself fully gay. Um, I still don't call myself fully gay. But I knew like there was something there for guys. Um, it's also something there for girls like I, I still did like girls but there was most definitely something there for guys for men and I was told by my mom to like just hide it just hide it don't be out there like that don't be kissing guys on Facebook and MySpace back when MySpace existed um, hide it and so I did that and I hated myself for it um, that's probably the worst decision I ever made uh, and then on top of that, being bisexual or being pansexual, whatever you want to call it, I'm not sure what to call it, I also still like women. I also, you know, found women attractive. But I felt from both ends that everybody would tell me, well, you're just one. You just are one. You can't be both. It's funny how our society works with people feeling like there has to be one of something. Like, you have to put, put in this box. And with me, you can't put me in a box. I'm not a, I'm not a damn can soup. You can't box me. Sorry, that was corny. Um, yeah, so I spent most of my life just repressing it and trying to put on this front of um, trying to prove to people that I can be this masculine guy. And I would just, I, I would hide it. If it didn't come up, I didn't say anything. I, if, if somebody came around who was too feminine acting, I rejected them, whether they were friendships or dates or whatever. And I felt bad about myself. So around the age of like when I moved out to LA, um, I still battled with it because people still didn't know I still kept it to myself. But I was able to kind of hang around and go to clubs more and everything like that. But it was still tough. It was still tough because I still did not like the person that I was. I wanted to fit this mold of being masculine or if I, damn if I was going to like guys, I was going to be a, 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 a nigga that like guys. Like I was going to be a guy that like guys. And I just didn't give myself room to be myself. And it's, it, it, it hurt. And it's funny because like movies like Love, Simon now, Love, Simon, Moonlight and everything. Moonlight was mainly my story growing up. And Love, Simon kind of like made me realize like how that felt when I first came out. But a lot of, a lot of people don't get that opportunity. Um, so maybe around this time last year, I think something just snapped in me. 
uh, and I finally came out to everybody. Not that like most of my friends knew at this time and point, and I did like I was more open about it, but I came out as like bi, bisexual. When I tell you it was the most freeing thing, like to not care anymore, not, not to care about family, what my family thought, what my friends thought, not to give a shit. That's the best peace of mind you can have. Um, granted, it was probably 10 years too late, but I don't regret it for anything. And if you're listening to this and you're struggling with your sexuality, whether you're bisexual, pansexual, or gay, um, or asexual, <laughs> just know that you don't owe anybody anything. Only person you owe something to is yourself. That's to love yourself enough, um, to have a peace of mind about who you are and know that you are good enough, you are accepted, um, and there's people out there who love the fuck out of you or who will love the fuck out of you. It might not seem like that now, but there's people who will. Um, and as a queer man of color um, in this day and age, I feel like that's needed more than anything. Um, although there's things in the media that um, I'm making us feel assured of ourselves. We do have a government who makes us not feel good about ourselves. And I'm here to tell you that you should really like respect and love yourself and take care of yourself. So yeah, um, that's a bit of my coming out story. I have to say for that. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And please go over to my um, reaction channel. I'm going to start that back up soon. Uh, we on the popping over there too. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.